In September, on the campus of Florissant Valley, St. Louis Community College presented the 2022 State of the St. Louis Workforce Report. For the past 14 years, the college has provided this annual report as a way to provide a comprehensive overview of the economic and workforce trends in the St. Louis region. We'll also look at some of the employment barriers. We've been asking this question um, for, most, uh, for the most part since the beginning. 436 local companies in 16 industry sectors were surveyed for the 2022 report. Of those companies, 32% added employees in the last 12 months, while 19% cut employees. Employers are optimistic for the coming year. 53% responded they plan to increase their workforce. But a barrier that may make that difficult is the shortage of skilled applicants. What I'm trying to impress upon you is we have a choice. We have a choice right now of what we can do, of where we can invest in people and invest in their communities, which makes them more competitive, more able to find jobs faster. And just like last year, the skilled trades, patient care, and manufacturing are the work sectors experiencing the highest skill shortage. But there are promising pathways to job growth in our region. For the first time, the 2022 State of the St. Louis Workforce Report includes data on startups, confirming that startups are a significant part of the local and regional economy. For the last decade, startups have contributed an average of 35,000 new jobs each year in the state of Missouri. And that impact of job growth can be seen in the St. Louis region with the addition of almost 15,000 new jobs by first time startups just in 2021. Just this regional contribution, those 15,000 jobs, account for 36.7% of new jobs created in the entire state. And I don't wanna gloss it over. Being an entrepreneur working for a startup, it's hard work. It's a high risk business. Success is definitely not guaranteed and not every business will continue to grow. But startups are where new jobs in the economy can happen. And what does any job need? Appropriate skills. Brooke Butler looks at a program for young entrepreneurs who with any luck will be the future job creators in our region. Well, it didn't take long for Jimmy to set himself up in business with his mother's help. Now, all he needs is some customers. The Lemonade Stand. Some might consider it a staple childhood experience. Kids might not know it at the time, but they're learning some of the fundamentals to entrepreneurship. There's so many pieces of a business that are equivalent to the Lemonade Stand. But these kids are taking the lemonade stand to the next level. Are you excited to make some money? I'm going to swim in. Young Biz Kids Day gathers dozens of aspiring entrepreneurs for an opportunity to set up and operate their own business. I like to tell parents, you know when your kids are really good at sports, you take them to a community center, you put them on a sports team. You know when they're really good at dance, you go take them and put them on a dance team. Well, where do you take those entrepreneurial kids that have that entrepreneurial book? You bring them to Young Biz Kids so that we can help them to cultivate what it is. Ariel Briggs is the founder of Young Biz Kids Day, which started in St. Louis, but has now spread to six other states and it all got started because of her own biz kid. Her son, Mikey Wren, got inspired to pursue his own business after a successful run with no other than a lemonade stand. So what we did, we set up next to a shoe store and the shoe store, the new Jordans was releasing that day. So everybody was standing outside waiting on those new Jordans. They was like, it's hot, I'm trying, I'm, let me go give me, some, give me some lemonade. We right there. And I made $1,200 in three days off of selling lemonade. $1,200 in three days? Yes. Mikey could have bought a PlayStation or a new bike, something similar to what the average eight-year-old would spend $1,200 on. Instead, he invested in vending machines. That idea came about because me and my mom was leaving summer camp. And I was like, Mom, can I have something at the vending machine? And she was like, no, but she said all the money that you put into those machines goes to the owner. But if you had your own, all the money would go to you. 
I took the money from the lemonade stand. It still wasn't just enough yet, so I ended up sacrificing not getting gifts for Christmas just so I was able to uh, get the rest of the money for my vending machine company. I started off with two vending machines, and now today currently I own 12. In fact, he is the youngest person to own his own vending machine. And Ari, do you have a business background? Were you in business before this? How did you start to guide him? Um, I've been an entrepreneur all of my life. I, middle school, um, high school, I braided hair, I sold candy, so I didn't know the term of what I was, but I knew that I was an entrepreneur. I did not have a business background, but once I started business with him, I started taking classes and finding out anything that I could about business. Um, I started developing a kind of curriculum um, where I was like, I'm gonna walk you through this business plan. We're gonna walk through market research. We're gonna walk through, you know, like just how to do research on starting a business. We started that process. It worked for him. So I started helping other parents walk through the same process on when a child comes to you and say, I wanna start a business. What does that look like? So what does it look like to start your own business? While some with more resources might have an easier way in to their desired market, there are more traditional routes. Here at St. Louis Community College, Phyllis Ellison with the Workforce Solutions Group explains how entrepreneurship can fit into almost any field of study and how vital it is for the health of the St. Louis workforce. And you know, when you, when you hear about those kind of high demand skilled jobs, I don't necessarily think about entrepreneurship. You know, so is, is there a need for entrepreneurs? There is a need for entrepreneurs. What we're seeing is that for the state of Missouri, first year startups are contributing over 40,000 new jobs every year. We're a significant player, not just for the St. Louis region, but for the state. And so to me, if we're looking at the state of the St. Louis workforce, understanding where those new jobs are coming from, what fields are they in, and then it starts to help the rest of us understand from an education standpoint, from those entrepreneur support organizations, where is that help needed? And so when you start thinking about what skills are needed to support those startups, that entrepreneur that took the chance to start something new, I love the idea of even the lemonade stand. It is creativity. It is reliability and showing up for work. It is uh, communication skills, critical thinking, problem solving. Those skills are critical. Whether we're training entrepreneurs or we are training the workforce to support those entrepreneurs as they start their companies, those skills are parallel to what larger companies need as well. But for some participating in Young Biz Kids Day, it doesn't seem like entrepreneurship is a career that they will be pursuing. At least, no plans to quit their future day jobs. Because I want to be like a veterinarian when I grow up, so like this would be fun to do as like a side business. Actually, I'm going to do it on the side, but I think I'm actually going to go into nursing. I see me going into real estate. Even Mikey has other plans for his career. But for him, entrepreneurship goes beyond simply earning a living. So entrepreneurship is more of a craft than running a business. It's a way of mindset. It's the way that you think. It's the way that you move. It's how you develop yourself. That's what entrepreneurship is. It's not really just running a business. So I see myself perfecting that gift that I have of entrepreneurship. Do you see college in your future? Um, it really depends. I don't see paying for college in my future. I see going to college for free in my future. Spoken like a true CEO. And Mikey has invested a lot in his natural business capabilities. After his successful start with Mikey's Munchies vending machines, he decided to write and publish two different children's books about entrepreneurship. When we started to brainstorm about him writing the book, he wanted an imaginary character, which is his briefcase. But then I was like, well, I'm the one talking about business. He's like, yeah, but don't nobody want to listen to a mom talk about business. Mikey doesn't like to tell everybody, but I am the briefcase that's inside the book. When he put the briefcase in, it worked because all the kids loved the briefcase. When we would show up to events, they were like, where's Biz? Where's Biz the briefcase? And I laughed because I'm like, well, I'm Biz the briefcase, but they really wanted to see the briefcase. <laughs> Are y'all ready? <laughs> do, you, do you 
really see the connections being made. Like you said, you were an entrepreneur all your life, but you really didn't know those terms. I mean, these are young kids. Yeah. Do you see the connections being made? Yes, yes, I do. It's an educational program, which the kids don't get that part. They think that they're selling, but they're gonna see the kids networking. They're gonna see them making eye contact. They're gonna see them making pitch, and then they're gonna be applying financial literacy because before the event, they had to set a smart goal on top of customer service, on top of standing up straight, because the goal is for them to learn these skill sets through business, but us as parents knowing that these skills are gonna transfer to the rest of their life and they're gonna be able to use those skills. For Living St. Louis, I'm Brooke Butler.